Hi, I'm Lance Culver, and in this video, I'm going to be using tie flow to create the effect of water droplets or rain hitting and drizzling down a window. The idea for this video comes from a tutorial released a few years back by Video Copilot, where Andrew Kramer uses After Effects to create the same effect. And yeah, his is probably a little better, but this is going to be 100% tie flow. So. with I'm just going to go to standard primitives and create a plane something like this we'll scale it just to fit the view here and you can I can either do control C to create a camera or come over here and create a V-ray physical camera go back into the perspective come up to helpers select tie flow tie icon Something like that's fine. Go wrong geometry, tie flow, drag that out here. Okay, drag a birth operator into a new event. You can rename this static rain. Let's give it 300 total. Change it to sprites. Maybe lower the size multiplier down. Can use the position icon. Pick the icon. And speed operator. Along icon arrow for the direction. Pick the icon. Let's go ahead and drop a spawn. Maybe 30 offspring. Put a collision operator into a new event here and connect it to the spawn. I'm going to go ahead and delete the parent. Okay, for collision, we can pick the plane and we can change this to sprites as well. Maybe lower this multiplier down some. I'm going to put spread operator on top of the collision. Reduce this random spread. We use an object bind into a new event over here, connect it to the collision, pick the plane, to rock the surface, snap the surface. Over here into my camera view. Let's get rid of this. Stretch that out there a little bit. Go ahead and rename this stack. And we can go ahead and select all three of these events. Right click, copy. Right click paste, change this color so we can see which is which, come up under this position icon and give it a different random seed. Okay, and under this, we'll rename this active. And reduce this friction down. Can add a force and give it something like negative 0.15. Do something like 0.12. Let's maybe lower this scale down. Curl. Under noise layer 2, you can use 0.08. And then down here under force effect, give it a variation of something like 
I'm gonna add a slow operator here and give it like 15% with maybe a 25% variation. Those raindrops will be coming down pretty fast. So basically what you have is raindrops falling, some stick, some hit the window and slide down. All right, simple enough. So now what we need to do is tell these particles to interact, right? And we're gonna do that with particle groups. And go ahead and put that in both of these events here. And I'll set this one on simulation group two and this one on simulation group one. So now if we select high flow, come down under physics here and activate simulation group one and two. Now we can use a property test under these blue particles. Okay, now we can check for neighbors. And we can say if there's a greater number than zero within a 0.75 radius, and we'll tell the property test to search for particles on simulation group two. So then we can just take and plug this property test into these active particles here. So as you can see, it's working just as expected. So what we're doing is, by using the particle groups, for these, let's say on these static particles, set them on group one. And these active particles are on group two. So we're using a property test on these particles. And we're searching for neighbors within a radius of 0.75 units. If there's any more than zero, that'll be fed and they'll become active. And we're searching on simulation group two. If we were to turn this off, then what would happen is they automatically, as they spawn, will be fed into this because they're searching for their neighbors. And right now their neighbors are everything, except for these lonely ones that don't have a neighbor. But we just are interested in the red particles. But what we might want to do is get rid of some of these single particles, little tiny raindrop like that might not, or would not roll down the window. So we can also, again, use a property test for that over here in this active event. Again, we'll search for neighbors. This time we'll say if there, there's less than one neighbor within a 0.75 unit radius, then we want it to become a static particle. I think we can go in under here, under this property test on the static event, and lower this radius down. Can also, real quick before I forget, I meant to do this earlier, increase the speed magnitude for both of these. And this probably would create a pretty cool effect just by itself, but I think we could make it a little more interesting with a particle bind. I think we can reduce the stiffness down to something like 0.25, maybe like a 10% variation. We can make these bindings breakable. Reduce this distance down here, maybe 1.25. Active. 
we'll reduce this down. I think we'll increase this maybe more. Maybe not quite that much. I think maybe what would be cool would be to add a new berth and we could use a position object. Pick the plane here. We could change this to sprites. Let's just add like I'm gonna be a thousand or more. Use a send out operator to just move them on over into this static event. Go to create under this drop down. Come down to tie flow, tie measure. Drag that out here and pick the tie flow. Can reduce this radius down to something like 0.7. Give the voxel size 0.25. The Gaussian filter. And then for the material, I just use the material library to find the water directly to the tie measure. And I already have a background image set up right here. Now, this is more of a light rain type of effect, but if you wanted a heavier rain, kind of like in this example here, you could increase the particle count. If you wanted longer streaks of water under the spread operator for the active particles, you could increase the Z value to something like 15, and that will stretch those out there. Increase the offspring for the spawn operator for those particles to 80, 90, or 100 to help fill in those spaces for the tie measure. I would recommend going through and adjusting some of those settings a little bit at a time. Kind of notice what's happening as you're doing it. Uh, going through there and messing with some of the particle bind settings, for instance. You know, for tie flow not being a real liquid simulator, this is not bad at all. And I can think of a lot of different applications where something like this might make a cool effect. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If there was any part of this that you don't quite understand or that you're having problems with, feel free to drop a comment below. As always, I hope you have a great day and we will see you next time. Thanks again.